Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Arif, your Cloudland Jenny partner. In today's video, we're going to talk about AWS IAM. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. So whenever we are dealing with any sort of permission, any sort of uh, uh, policies or role related to AWS, we are de dealing with AWS IAM. It's a very important service. So if you want to secure your infrastructure, your application, you really need to know AWS IAM. So after watching today's video, you will have a solid understanding like how to configure AWS IAM users, role, groups, and everything. So anything related to AWS IAM, you will be able to answer it after today's video. So uh, before starting the video, just want to talk about uh, my experience in AWS. So I do have more than eight years of experience in uh, cloud computing, specifically AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Besides, I do have multiple uh, certification related to cybersecurity and cloud security. So this channel is all about uh, cloud computing and uh, cloud security. So if this is your interest field, please like and subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to upload more and more videos related to it. And without further delay, let's get started. I have logged into my AWS uh, account. So from the search menu, I'm going to look for IAM. Uh, the first one, manage access to AWS resources. So this one. So I'm going to open it in a new tab. So this is the dashboard of uh, IAM, uh, which is identity and access management. So from the left panel, we can see it has multiple subsections. So whenever we create an AWS account, by default, we'll have one root user. And it's very important to enable MFA multi-factor authentication for the root user. So for my uh, IAM account, I do have um, MFA enabled. So that's why I'm getting a green check mark, a check mark in here. And uh, also the root user shouldn't have any active uh, access keys. So if uh, you have any access keys uh, that is attached to the root user, then we must need to delete it because it's uh, dangerous because root user has the uh, complete, uh, complete privileges. And if uh, the access keys are compromised, that means your whole AWS account is compromised. So for that reason, we need to be sure that we should get this uh, green check mark for these two key points. Okay. So uh, from the dashboard, uh, we can see that we do have these uh, subsections. Let's talk about the user group. So let's uh, think about it. So you do have a organization. You uh, you do have uh, multiple people working under your organization. Some are developers, some are system administrators, and some are other roles. Okay. So for that, what you can do, you can create uh, different roles for that. For an instance, if uh, uh, this is my account, my product account from where I deal with uh, everything related to my application. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a group. So maybe let, uh, let's let call it developer. Okay. Developers. And uh, when we create a group, it's a very good idea to att attach the permission and into this uh, group level so we do have two choices in here so suppose uh, you create this uh, group and you attach your permission under this group level then you can add multiple users multiple developers under this uh, group and those uh, users won't have any permission directly attached to them so they will inherit the permission from the group that's the uh, best practice and the other way is that uh, attaching permission uh, into every single user but it's not uh, recommended so it's always better to attach policies to the group level so that you can manage it easily Okay, so uh, let's uh, add, uh, maybe we want to give EC2 full permission, EC2. Yes, here you can see this uh, Amazon EC2 full access. So maybe I want to provide my developers full access to my EC2 service. In that case, I'm going to select that and uh, just I need to click create group. So now I do have a group that is named as developers and this developer group will have this uh, easy to full access permission. Now we do have a group and uh, the group has permission. Great. So the next step, what we're going to do, we're going to create users like developer. Maybe we have hired a new developer. Now we're going to create a new account for the developer so that the developer can start working on any projects. Okay, so let's uh, 
click add users in here and we're gonna name uh, the developer maybe developer one okay so after that uh, we are seeing there is a checkbox where it's going to provide user access to aws management console so whenever we create an im user under aws cons im console there are two type of uh, uh, access one is the console access so this interface this is called the uh, console access the another access is the programmatic access which is uh, uh, done by using AWS CLI so uh, if your developer just only needs the access the programmatic access then uh, uh, we can uh, ignore this one so that meant we don't want to provide our developer the access of our console but if your developer needs both um, console and programmatic access in that case we need to check this one so that means uh, it will create two kind of like credentials one for the uh, one for the cli uh, access and one for the console access so let's uh, select this one and uh, are you providing the console access to a person user type so there are two types of users there we have to choose one of these that's the first one is specify user in identity center and other one is uh, i want to create an im user so let's go with an im user and uh, the console password so for password we do have two, two options too one is to auto generate a password one is the custom password i always go for the auto generated password because it's uh, more complex and uh, uh, it's stronger so that's why i always go for the auto generated password and uh, there's also one option is that the user must create a new password at next sign in recommend so if we check this option that means whenever we provide the new credential to the new user the user whenever the user will log into the console he or she needs to uh, recreate the password but the problem with this option is that if you want to have this then you also need to attach the new permission under the user level to be able to change the password so then we have to again add some im permission under the user so if you think it's a little bit of uh, extra work then you can just ignore this one okay and let's uh, click next so now we need to set permission for the user so uh, the good thing is that we already have created uh, a group for our user developer group so i'm gonna just select that and i don't want to attach any permission at user level remember at the beginning of the video i told that uh, it's better to attach policies to the group level not a user level so for that reason i'm gonna choose the group that is developer so this user will be a part of the developer group and if you want to set permission boundaries so it's optional but it's good to have like if you are providing some sort of uh, production uh, account access and you want to add some sort of restriction in here maybe like the users can't delete any ec2 server then you can define those sort of uh, restriction under this set boundary option okay so after selecting this then uh, i'm gonna click next and now we are reviewing everything and once we click create user uh, now we have new credentials so now we do have the console sign in url the, dev the the username and the console password so we can also download it in the in a csv file i'm gonna do that so once we have this then if we provide this uh, csv file to the developer the developer should be able to log into the aws console and the programmatic access everything so cool so now we do have a developer user also so let's uh, go back to the user list now we do have one developer and this developer one is part is uh, inside this uh, uh developers group so under the group names if we click the developers group here we'll see that now we have one user under the developer group now we're going to talk about uh, roles and policies uh, uh, these the two are uh, very related so uh, if i click roles in here some roles are pre-populated by aws so if I click any one of this role in here, all role has uh, multiple policies. So policies are part of uh, roles. 
So if uh, we want to provide any sort of access to any AWS resources, let's uh, assume one uh, scenario in here. Suppose uh, we want to provide our EC2 server ac to, uh, uh, the access to uh, S3 bucket. So how can I define it? We can define it uh, using these rules. Uh, let's see how can we do it. So if we click create rules in here, so there are multiple type of rules. So one is AWS service, uh, services. So here we can allow services like EC2 Lambda and other perform action in the, in this account. Some are uh, uh, third, uh, third party to pl platform actions in this account. So here AWS account related, we can have uh, roles for SAML federation, for the custom trust policy, but most often it's uh, used for the AWS services. So once we select that, then uh, here we have to define the use cases for which service we are trying to provide access. So use cases, let's select EC2. It's a mon most use cases, most common use case. Then next, we need to select like what kind of access we want to provide this EC2 uh, server or EC2 service. So if we want to provide like uh, S3, S3 uh, read, let's search for it. So here is the policy. So this policy, if we click this plus uh, button, plus sign in here, here what uh, it is, it is a JSON format um, that is uh, defining that it is allowing S3 get list and other permission to all S3 buckets. So if I attach this policy with this uh, role, that means uh, this uh, this EC2 server service can access uh, or read objects from S3 buckets. So suppose when we are deploying a EC2 server, if we attach this rule with that particular EC2 server, then that EC2 server will be able to read objects or files from S3 buckets. Okay. So if I select this and then go for the next option in here, here we have to just name it. So I'm going to call it EC2 um s3 read access okay here we can also see uh, one small uh, uh, json code that is uh, named as uh, select trusted entities if we look into it so it's uh, allowing the action sts assume rule and the principal is service ec2 dot amazon aws dot com so this is what we defined at the very beginning of uh, the role creation so this uh, role will be uh, used by the uh, by the ec2 service this is what we are defining in here so uh, after reviewing everything uh, now we can just hit uh, create role in here and now we'll have our role named as uh, EC2 S3 read access. So whenever if we create a new EC2 server, we can uh, attach this uh, role to the EC2 server so that the EC2 server can access uh, S3 objects for uh, maybe some. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, let's uh, let's assume that uh, we do have a EC2 web server and we are hosting the contents maybe some uh, images in a s3 bucket because the s3 storage is uh, cheaper comparing to ebs so when, uh, whenever this ec2 web server needs to access those contents it can just uh, look for it for from the s3 bucket and uh, serve those uh, in our web uh, web application so in this way we are creating a solution and we are making sure that we are not paying extra so in this way we have to uh, integrate multiple AWS services together uh, to make a very cost efficient and a very uh, redundant solution in AWS. So that's our role part and the, for the policies. And uh, if uh, we want to create our own policy, customized policy, if all the policies that are currently available in here is uh, not uh, fulfilling our purpose, then we can create our own customized policies too. So for an instance, uh, here we can choose uh, uh, EC2 and uh, there are 
two options in here so the visual one is that it's uh, easier to create and the other one is the json so if you're uh, comfortable with the json script you can just create your policy in here or if you need the visual assistance then you can use here you can create policy in here so maybe like for ec2 you can choose like uh, access level is it for the uh, list only or is it for read write or tagging you can create it so once you choose things in here maybe you are choosing some of the options in here you can see the changes under the json so here it's pretty much uh, we are defining it in here and uh, uh, under JSON is having the same thing. So in this way, you can also create your own customized policies and then you can create uh, rules uh, using those policies uh, for your permission purpose. Congratulations guys for uh, reaching this part of this video. Today we have covered AWS IAM user, group, policies and rules. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any sort of doubt related to this, uh, please let me know under this comment section and I'm going to reply back in a very short bit of time. So if you found this uh, video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to upload more and more videos related to cloud, cybersecurity and cloud security. If you want me to cover any specific topics, please let me know that too under this comment section. Thank you so much guys for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. And uh, that's all for today. Have a great and wonderful day.